Welcome back. Thank you for being here with us. Today we're going to look at uh, Acts 24. And, and what I find interesting, really not just in this chapter, but especially in this chapter, is how uh, God doesn't have time or doesn't see time or even interact with time like we do. So when you hear verses like Isaiah 40, where it says, Those that wait upon the Lord will renew their strength. They'll rise up with wings like eagles. They'll, you, you know, that, that, that there is this waiting we sometimes have to do. And it's, and when we wait, we're really waiting on God. Like we who are the faithful, as we wait, we are waiting on God. Um, so when he tells us things that are in his plan, things that are going to happen, uh, when we start putting time frames on it, we really start dabbling in things we know nothing about. If you remember, last time uh, we left off, Paul had been told by God in Jerusalem. He said, God told Paul, he said, You've been my witness here in Jerusalem. Now it's not time for you to die. You must now be my witness in Rome. So you've done what I asked you to do in Jerusalem, and now you're headed, uh, in my plan, you're headed to Rome. And so then uh, Paul was uh, arrested. There was a plot that came to light, and the, the Roman authorities there in Jerusalem sent him to Caesarea. And when he gets to Caesarea, here's what happens. Starting in chapter 24. After five days, the high priest Ananias came down with some elders and an attorney named Tertullus. And they brought charges to the governor against Paul. After Paul had been summoned, Tertullus began to accuse him, saying to the governor, Since we have uh, through you attained much peace, and since by your providence reforms are being carried out in this nation, we acknowledge that in every way and everywhere most excellent Felix, Felix, with all thankfulness. But that I might not weary you any further, I beg you grant us by your kindness a brief hearing. For we have found this man a real pest, and a fellow who stirs up dissension among the Jews throughout the world, and a ringleader of the sect of the Nazarene. And he even tried to desecrate the temple, and then we arrested him. We wanted to judge him according to our own law, but Lysias, the commander, came along and with much violence took him out of our hands, ordering his accusers to come before you. By examining him yourself concerning all these matters, you will be able to ascertain the things of which we accuse him. The Jews also joined in the attack, asserting that these things were so. Well, when the governor had nodded for him to speak, Paul responded, Here's Paul's defense. Knowing that for many years you have been the judge to this nation, I cheerfully make my defense. Since you can take note of the fact that no more than 12 days ago I went up to Jerusalem to worship, neither in the temple nor in the synagogues nor in the city itself did they find me carrying on a discussion with anyone who was causing a riot. Nor can they prove to you the charges of which they now accuse me. But this I admit to you, that according to the way which they call a sect, I do serve the God of our fathers, believing everything that is in accordance with the law and that is written in the prophets, having a hope in God, which these men cherish themselves, that there shall certainly be a resurrection of both the righteous and the wicked. In view of this, I also do my best to maintain always a blameless conscience before God and before men. Now, after several years... I came to bring alms to my nation and to present offerings, in which they found me occupied in the temple, 
having been purified without any crowd or uproar. But there were some Jews of Asia who ought to have been present before you and to make the accusation, if they should have anything against me. Or else let these men themselves tell what misdeed they found when I stood before them in the council, other than for this one statement which I shouted out, standing with among them, for the resurrection of the dead, I'm on trial for you today. Now, we looked at that last week some. Paul giving his defense. And <clears throat> what these Jews brought out was Paul's a pest. And we want you to, and we want to get rid of him according to our law. But but your commander took him away after causing violence among among us. Uh, took him away and gave him to you. We just want our honest uh, share in seeing him done away with. And Paul stands up for his defense and he says a few things. One of which he says is that it was less than 12 days ago whenever I entered Jerusalem. That meant that he was only there for a week. And, and if you'll remember, God had been telling Paul, you're going to go to Jerusalem, you're going to go to Jerusalem, you're going to go to Jerusalem. And he was there for only a week. And then, and then God tells him, you've done what I wanted you to do. So in God's timeline, really, this whole big thing of Paul coming to Jerusalem happened in a week. And then he says, you completed what I had for you to do. Well, then Paul's defense continues on, saying that um, I had brought money from people all around. I'd been gone a few years, and I came back to give this money as an offering to my people to help them. Because they were there was a, a, a famine going on. So he came back to give this money to his people to help relieve some of the, some of the stress of, of this famine. And he said, whenever I went to the temple, I was there, I had been purified, and I wasn't associating with anybody who was causing a problem. And it wasn't until some Jews from Asia had followed me here that they were the ones that started up all this trouble. And they're not in front of you now to bring their accusation. So really, the people who are here talking to you are second-hand witnesses. The only thing they have against me is that I stood up in their presence and yelled out, I am here because I believe in the resurrection of the dead. And he said, they, they say that I'm a member of this sect called the Way, which I am. But my conscience is clear. And he said, in, in following this way, I believe in the law. I believe in the prophets. He defends those things. The, the actions of belief in Jesus come through a belief in the law and a belief in the prophets. So the law and the prophets molded this what they call the sect of Jesus, of Nazarenes, right? The way. And so after Paul presents his case, here's what Felix has to say in verse 22. We'll read through the end of the chapter, and, that'll, and then we'll make a couple observations, and then it'll be yours. Starting 22. But feeling, but Felix having a more exact knowledge about the way, put them off, saying, When Lysias the commander comes down, I'll decide your case. Then he gave orders to the centurion for him, Paul, to be kept in custody and yet have some freedom, not to prevent any of his friends from ministering to him. But some days later, Felix arrived with Drusilla, his wife, who was a Jewess, and sent for Paul and heard him speak about faith in Christ Jesus. 
But as he was discussing righteousness, self-control, and the judgment to come, Felix became frightened and said, Go away for the present, and when I find time, I will summon you. At the same time, he was hoping that money would be given to him by Paul. Therefore, he used to send for him quite often and converse with him. But after two years had passed, Felix was succeeded by Portius Festus, and wishing to do the Jews a favor, Felix left Paul imprisoned. So Felix, he understood more about what was going on than what he led on as a judge. He knew what was happening. He could see what was really going on. And basically to dismiss this whole thing, he said, when Lysias the commander comes down here, I'll talk to him about it and get his testimony, and then I'll make a decision. And then he sends the Jews on their way. And he puts Paul in prison. Except it's not a a strict prisonment. He says he can go and do some things that that he likes to do. And if any of his friends want to come and minister to him, then they are more than welcome to do so. And so Paul was living in Caesarea for nearly two years. Well, for two years. And at the end of two years, Felix, uh, his governorship was over, and a fellow named Festus came in in his place. But you see really what Felix wanted whenever he said, uh, he went to talk with, with Paul. And whenever Paul was talking about Things like sharing a godly way of living about righteousness and self-control and the judgment that's to come. Felix says, I don't want to really hear any of that. What he really wanted was for Paul to give him some money and then he would have let him loose. But Paul knew. God had told him, you're going to be my witness in Rome. And so for two years he waits. He waits. He shares the gospel to whom he can, and he waits. You know, God has plans for us. But they're not on our timetable. God specifically told Paul, I'm going to let you be my witness in Rome. Nothing's going to happen to you. You're going to, or nothing's going to to kill you. You still have a job, and that job is you're going to go to Rome. But yet he didn't tell him when. And so here's Paul. Brave. Confident. Because nothing's going to happen to him that's going to take away from his ultimate goal of being a witness in Rome. God promised him that. And so Paul can stand up and tell the good news to whoever he wants. Freely. Even though he's in prison. And he's waiting. You know, Jesus is going to return. That's a promise. Jesus is going to return. And when he does, it's going to be on God's timeline. We know it's going to be good for us. Oh, we know it's going to be good. And we wait. And just like Paul waits, we can wait confidently. We don't have to be afraid of death because we know that something good is coming and he's not going to leave us out of it.
Now, he doesn't promise us it will be easy. And we'll see some of Paul's trip to Rome in which it's not easy. It's quite hard, and he goes through some dangerous times. But God's going to make sure you get to where you need to be if you trust in Him and believe in Him. Paul was free. Paul was free with the knowledge that he believed in Jesus and that he was faithful to God. And that gave him a courage to be this Apostle Paul that is uh, a hero of the faith. We too can be heroes of the faith as we believe in Jesus, as we live faithfully day to day, waiting on God to put us where He wants us to be. I hope you have a great week and a, and a happy 4th of July. We'll see you next time.